Guys, I'm sure you've all seen and heard the news as to why I'm not fighting on December the 18th now. Just thought I'd come in here and tell you myself. Um, training camp couldn't have gone any better for me for the first week, two weeks. But then I contracted a bacterial chest infection, which led me go to the gym and just not being able to breathe. You know, I was in my sparring sessions, pad work sessions, whatever it may be, just not being able to breathe and coughing up huge amounts of phlegm all the time. It led me to sleepless nights. And that went on for about four weeks because I had the mindset of I'm going to keep training, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to have the fight no matter what. And four weeks passed and we decided to have a sparring session and I took a little clip to the body and because my body was so weak due to the virus inside of me, I instantly knew something wasn't right. I was throwing up from the pain, I was doubled over. I literally got my bag and went straight to the hospital, straight for an MRI scan. And I got the results back the same day and the results uncovered that I had a clean break in my rib. I'm going to insert the picture here so you can see for yourself and had multiple fractures. I still, you know, for the following week thought, do you know what, you'll be fine, I can fight. And then it really, you know, it took down, it took the doctor and my whole team to really say, listen, you've got a broken rib and multiple fractures here, like you can't fight. And even now sitting here filming this video, it hasn't really sank in that I'm not fighting. All my focus is on right now is getting a new fight date set um, and recovering. That's all I can do right now. I can't do anything else apart from get my body right as quickly as possible and look for a new fight date with Jake Paul. There is no other fight that I want out there. That's the fight that I want next. And like I said, guys, I'm just gonna recover now and hopefully we can work out a new date for next year. Finally, Fury guys. is boxing's biggest bitch. He has pulled out of the fight. The Furies have pulled out of the fight due to a medical condition. Uh, who knows what the fuck is going on in that camp. I think he has a bad case of prositis. I couldn't believe the news at first. Does, it still doesn't even seem real. Uh, he fumbled the biggest bag of his life. Now he will be watching at home, paying me $60 instead of getting paid millions of dollars to fight me. Uh, I fought with a broken nose. I fought sick. Get the fuck over it. This is boxing. Uh, it's official. He, he was scared. I think the pressure got to him. The shit talk got to him. That's the bad news, guys. The good news is, is that Mr. Tyron Woodley, we called him up. We were like, hey, you want to take the fight? He has been training. He goes, sure, I'll take the fight. Let's do the rematch. Run it back. I'm giving him $500,000 extra if he can knock me out. Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley too. Leave no doubt. I didn't knock him out the first time. I'm coming back and I'm getting that crazy W, the crazy highlight real knockout. December 18th, the show must go on. I'll see you guys there. As I'm sure many of you have already heard the news that Tommy Fury has pulled out of the fight for December 18th against Jake Paul. So that is not going to be happening. However, apparently Tyron Woodley is stepping up and he is taking the fight on short notice against Jake Paul. So that is a huge, huge early Christmas gift for Tyron Woodley. And also uh, on Twitter, apparently Jake Paul says that he's gonna give Tyron Woodley an extra $500,000 if he can knock him out during the fight, that's also pretty cool. It's a serious, uh, you know, verbal agreement between the two. Um, those two have a little bit of a weird rivalry thing going. And I don't think it's really a rivalry. I think it's just more of like boxing press conferences and overall management. Like it's not real. Everybody knows that it's not real, but they just want you to get this in your heads that they don't like each other you know, oh, I got his name tattooed on him. It's just, this whole thing is absolutely a circus. Again, I told you guys this, you're not gonna see Jake Paul get KO'd, flatlined, in the fucking ring the way most people wanna see him. That is why you're tuning in. You're tuning in to see him get tuned up, but he's not, you know, because the moment he falls on that canvas, the money and everything goes out the window. The promotions, the, uh, you know, pay-per-views, everything just starts to fall down because he is the money train of boxing at this moment. And, uh, you know, I just want to touch on something. They, they're they saying that Tommy Fury kind of fumbled this fight. He had a chance to make the biggest payday of his career. And that is true. He did have the chance to make, you know, the biggest payday of his career. However, in this case, he had to put the health and the overall longevity of his career first because in the video, and you guys could see it, you know, he puts up an x-ray. He says that he had an infection previous to, you know, training. And then I guess his calcium deposits or overall calcium uh, was deficient in the body, took a bad body shot uh, and broke his rib. And that needs to be kind of taken care of immediately because if it doesn't, you know, the rib can, I guess, break in a certain way, you puncture a lung, 
You could even, you know, puncture something else. And then whose fault is it, you know, because it's your fault that you wanted to be a tough guy. And now all of a sudden you have a puncture in your lung and, you know, things are not looking good for you. So I think it's 100% serious. I think uh, Tommy Fury actually did the right move. Um, now, if this is true where, you know, he did break his rib, he should be able to come back relatively on the short swing if Jake Paul wants to stay active. So that fight is probably going to happen in the future at some point. Um, and that's the only fight that I could really see happening where, you know, maybe Tommy Fury wins on points or something like that. Who really knows? But essentially, I stay with the intention and the understanding that Jake Paul is not going to get knocked out. He's not going to get TKO'd. He is not going to get hurt in that, that ring because essentially, as soon as that happens, the money dries up and then where, where are you going to go? You know, not, none of these guys are going to fight Canelo. Uh, none of these guys are going to want to fight uh, in a lower or higher weight class than what they already fight at. It's just too dangerous. It's too risky. You know, the, the big names in boxing right now are at heavyweight, uh, you know, middleweight, super middleweight, cruiserweight, that you have some big names there. And then you have the very lower weight classes as well, where you have other big names. But overall, in boxing, there is not a ton of top talent that you're going to get a crazy payday. Also, they're not really going to be open to taking a fight against an ex MMA person or, you know, someone in that ballpark. So Jake Paul literally is the money train. Um, and then going into this fight where you see Tyron Woodley wants to step up and he wants to take it, you know, overall, I think Tyron Woodley was going to be a replacement no matter what. So uh, worst case scenario, maybe even Jake Paul fell out or something, something happened there. Tyron Woodley would have stepped up and took this fight. Who knows? But uh, overall, Ty Tyron Woodley is stepping up. He is taking the fight. I don't know if he has had a real full training camp for Jake Paul. I know Jake Paul has had a full training camp. So it's, it is a little bit, you know, nerve wracking for for a guy like Tyron Woodley, he may gas out. He may have some cardio issues. Um, however, I don't know if they're really going to be strict with their testing because if they're not, you know, we could see the return of uh, Strike Force Woodley at, at the age of what, like 42, 43 right now. We could see the return of uh, Strike Force Woodley, and you know, he may be able to do something on the turnaround where you know he gets his cardio back up and he gets, you know, he just gets huge before the fight and you know, essentially that's just going to lead him into a better situation. So we don't really know what we're going to see from him. Overall, I think, I think Jake Paul is probably going to win by points or they may stop the fight if they see, you know, Tyron Willie's gassing and, you know, something happens in that, in that manner. But I, all, all the time, every time I see these matchups where you see a Paul brother, I just, I see them winning more times than not. Now I know his brother, I know his brother has a fight against uh, Mike Tyson, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with that because, you know, Mike Tyson's, you know, older, he still has his movement, he still has, obviously, the punching capabilities and the muscle memory, but he's just slower, he's older, and, you know, you touch that guy on the chin, he, he's going to be affected by it, you know, when, when you're older like that, your body doesn't operate the same way, you know, you don't have the same amount of testosterone, obviously, so he's probably going to be on PEDs going into that fight. Both both people are probably going to be on PEDs going into that fight. So um, that's definitely going to be the PED bowl type of fight. Um, even this fight, this could be even a PED main event. So you never know um, because I don't know if they're really stricting like that. I don't know who's, you know, the commission. I don't know if it's uh, USADA. I don't know if it's NADA or whatever it is uh or wada whatever it's called I, I forgot the name of the actual commission for boxing i think it's wada um i don't know if they're going to be really you know strictly testing these athletes before this fight but i hope they don't because maybe we could see better fights out of it maybe we could see uh them go at a higher pace it puts on a more entertaining fight and ultimately you know they want this to be high promo and higher entertainment in these fights. That's really what they're aiming for. And you almost get that every time you watch a Jake Paul fight. Um, and a, you know, just any Paul brother, if you see them in the in the ring, you know you're just gonna get high entertainment, high promo, and it's ultimately just gonna sell. Everybody's gonna wanna see them get knocked out or maybe knock someone out if they're not playing the bad role. And you're left kind of feeling like, ah, oh, that's it's weird, you know? Uh, so it is what it is. 
Uh, in this fight, I'm probably going to, again, stick with Jake Paul. I think he's just going to win either more rounds or they're going to just stop the fight because maybe he hits, you know, Woodley with a body shot or he catches Woodley behind the ear or something weird like that. And they stop the fight and they, you know, kind of wave it off and in a weird way, like how they did against Ben Askren. Um, so that's just what I see happening. Let me know what you guys uh, think is going to happen with this fight. Uh, do you think Jake Paul is going to win? Tyron Woodley is going to win? Who you guys got on this fight? Uh, also, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. I upload every week. MMA, current events, combat sports, news. Also, like the video if you did like it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.